Bitcoin finally gave us the three items I was looking for for the past few videos to be almost sure that this is not a dead cat bounce coming from the $28,800 level, the bottom as everyone is calling it, to the current levels of $49,000 or fifty, dollars around $49,000, 50000 Also, there is a possibility that now that almost confirmed that this is not a dead cat bounce, we shall see a slight retracement in Bitcoin price action in the coming days. This and much more coming your way. Stay tuned. The podcast is about to begin. Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today is Monday, the start of a new week, 23rd of August 2021, and Bitcoin is having a real hard time to break the resistance from 48,000 to 51,000. So I'm expecting a slight retracement at the current price action. But however, at least we have the three items I was looking for to confirm that this is not a dead cat bounce. And we are very, very possibly uh, starting the second part of the bull cycle of 2021. The only thing that I need to know now is when will the top be in? So this is the big question that everyone is asking. Of course, it's very hard to answer that question. But at least let's see the confirmation of the second part of the bull cycle and also the possible retracement in the charts. So here we are, guys. This price to time model, a weekly chart, as you guys know already, this is a log chart also because it has a big, uh, a big um, outlook of the Bitcoin price action since very early, uh, 10 years ago, and also the weekly RSI. So right now, we are very, very well indeed, we are on the starting the sixth week on the green, it doesn't mean that we will continue on the green forever. And I'm expecting a slight retracement. So let's see how that goes, but we will see it further in the charts to come. Right now, regarding the price to time model, I'm really, really optimistic. So we are very, very close to the yellow candle pattern, which corresponds to the 2017 bull cycle. And the distance is getting um, smaller and smaller. Right now, the 20-week SMA, the green line you guys see here, is already curving up. And also the 200-period SMA, the red line, is also slightly, slightly turning up, increasing the steepness. So right now, everything looks good. The price-to-time uh, model looks good too. The only question is, will we have a final top still this year? or probably in the first few months of the next year, 2022. So uh, that is the big question. Of course, we will have to wait a few more weeks and at least just to have a hint about what is going to happen still this year. So regarding the RSI, of course, the RSI looks very, very good. We are out of the circle that I plotted weeks ago when we were about to come below this orange dashed line, which corresponds to the mid-cycle 2013 after the 75% correction of the price action. So if you guys remember, I've been saying this a lot of times, this bull cycle of 2021 looks very much alike the 2013 cycle when we had this local top here in the middle of the bull cycle, 75% correction and then continuation to the upside to finally find a top almost by the end of the year of 2013. I believe that the current cycle that we are experiencing right now will be very, very similar to that, but time will tell and we have to wait some more time already, uh, of course, to see if this will be a local top halfway to the final top that everyone is expecting and what kind of levels we will achieve for the final part of this bull cycle. But that's it for the price to time model. Let's see now how we are doing in the MRI strategy. So the weekly chart, which is the chart I love the most right now, 
this chart looks very very good i've been telling this to a lot sorry too um too many times already but you guys know that i really like this chart it looks very good since the 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 uh, when the price bounced from the 50 period SMA here, the yellow line, and we have been uh, having already six weeks on the green. Although I believe, I believe that now that we have all the confirmations we needed, and I'm just going to uh, list them already uh, again in the in the podcast, I believe that we might be close to a slight retracement here of the price action on Bitcoin. But let's start with first things, first things first, and so the the first thing that I mentioned to you guys in the intro of this show today of the podcast, I said that we finally have the three items that I was looking for in order to see this not as a dead cat bounce, but as a continuation of the bull cycle. So the first one was, of course, this candle here, the number four candle on the one to nine count on the green. It had to close above 46 and a half or 47. And this candle closed around 47,000, almost precisely 47,000. So the first item on the list was completed here at this point. The second item on the list was, of course, we could not break the 20 week SMA to the downside. And this is the 20 week SMA line here. And the second point is, of course, completed for now. We had a retracement almost touching the 20 week SMA, but we never touched it and we went back up to close the third point on the list. And the third point was, of course, the candle number five. And the candle number five had to close. So yesterday, or sorry, this this evening at 1 a.m. Portuguese time had to close on the green. And we actually closed it on the green around $49,363. So the three points that I was looking for to have a confirmation that... Um, this is not a uh, dead cat bounce, of course, probabilistically, this is never 100% sure, but at least I have a high degree of confidence that this will not be a dead cat bounce. This will not be a one to four candle correction according to the manual of the MRI indicator, and we are now continuing to the upside. So we have now five, at least five closed candles on the green. So that means the one to four candle correction could not exist. And also the degree of confidence that this is not a dead cat bounce is very, very high. So right now, the only thing that remains to know is when will we have a slight retracement of the price action and uh, what will happen next? Will we continue to have uh, after this retracement that I... I'm expecting to happen in the next few days. Uh, will we have a continuation or will we retest the 20 week SMA or will we have bigger problems like, for example, breaking the support of the 20 week SMA and continuing to the downside, for example, to find support again on the 50 period SMA. So many, many probabilities exist right now. But the most important thing is that the weekly chart looks great. However, I see something happening soon, probably this week we will have a retracement and we will have to evaluate when that happens, the probabilities we have of finding support on either SMA line or even uh, other support levels that we have plotted on the charts already. So right now, everything looks very good. We are on a, a green six of nine. So according to the MRI, we might have three more weeks or two more weeks of upside. Uh, the only thing we don't know is how big will those candles be or if we will correct before getting to the nine count. So right now the weekly chart looks very good. The uh, I'm expecting the 20 week SMA to start turning up. And as you guys can see, those three green dots are already turning up here. And the yellow dots also confirm that the 50 period SMA will continue to go up. And despite this big correction of 56% we had a few months ago, the yellow SMA, the 50 period SMA, almost did not move from its way, from its path, and it's continuing to go up, as well as the 100 period, 100 weeks SMA, and the 200 weeks SMA, the purple line on the chart. So right now, I'm not even expecting 
the 20 week SMA to cross below the 50 period SMA. If we continue this leg up or even some accumulation around this area, I do not expect those two lines to cross. And I hope that the 20 week SMA will slide, uh, will slowly and steadily turn back up and become parallel to the 50 period SMA, the yellow line. So right now, everything looks good. Uh, let's see how this weekly candle evolves. I'm expecting a small retracement, as I said, for this week. So it's probable that this candle could go on the red, but then that is the time to evaluate exactly what might happen. So the RSI looks bullish to me, although it's uh, having a slight curve towards sideways, but we are still bullish and we still have some room to go to the upside here on the RSI on the weekly chart. Of course, the MACD looks great. Finally, the MACD has the blue line above the orange line and we have already the second green bar on the MACD. So the MACD is now turning, the weekly MACD is now turning bullish. And this is a very good sign also that we might continue to the upside or have a slight accumulation around this area before finally breaking the resistance around 48 to 51,000. So let's see how that goes. But let's go now to the daily chart. I've spent too much time on the weekly, but that's just because the weekly chart looks great and I love it right now. So the daily chart is having a nice event. We have the 20 period SMA crossing to the upside of the 200. Finally, one of the um, one of the uh, shorter time frames SMAs is crossing the 200, and for the first time we will have that. Although this is not any golden cross, as you guys know, uh, but anyway, uh, this is very very good event. We also had the yellow line crossing above the red, which means the 50 crossing above the 100 periods, and everything looks great to start having a bullish uh, momentum. The funding rate, however, is turning back up, so we have the uh, disfavoring the bears a little bit, but it's not very high, so it's not uh, something that you should be worried about already. But I will continue to follow the funding rate on BitMEX, of course, and I will post any news about this. So the RSI is now really, really close to the border, the border of the overbought territory. Uh, that might trigger in the short term, and as I said before when I was looking to the weekly chart, this might turn out to be a slight retracement to the downside here, but let's see how that goes. And uh, I'm, I have been already seeing this this morning and just a few hours ago before recording the video, but right now I am seeing a slight retracement on Bitcoin's price action, so let's see how that turns out to be on the short term. Regarding the MACD on the daily, we went. We entered this uh, bearish territory just for a, a slight moment here, four bars on the daily. So four days that we had the probability of a bearish momentum. But right now we are again on the green for the last few days, and the blue line is again above the orange. Although they together are almost parallel and going sideways, so the MACD on the daily chart is not very helpful right now. But the RSI could be pointing to an overbought situation and a slight retracement, as I said. So I continue to believe that the 49 to 50,000 will have a slight retracement unless some really, really, really crazy bulls appear and start to buy some billions. And of course, you can never guess that. So that's the daily chart. Let's take a look very quickly to the four hour chart. So here's the, re the retracement I was talking about. So. Actually, I was expecting this retracement to occur around the 49,000 level, but we still went up yesterday in a fury. We went to the probable level of retracement of the MRI here, and we had another just slight push to the upside. And after that one, we had this big retracement already, and we are now around $49,830. So... This is just $800 above the level that I was expecting to see a retracement. However, the retracement is here, as you can see on the four hour chart. And I'm expecting that we probably might find support around the previous resistance, which was, uh, let me just remove the logo or I don't see that. Which was exactly around $49,250. 
So I'm still expecting a slight retracement. And it could even be possible that we would find support here around the 47,000 on the 50 period SMA. But I'm not expecting such a big retracement to occur in just a few hours. Let's see how the next few days will occur, will what the next few days will give us in terms of charts and what we can take out of that as technical analysis. So right now, the four hour chart was really, really close on the RSI to the overbought territory. Of course, I'm expecting a slight retracement to this trend line here on the RSI, which has been support many, many times already for the past few months. And if that occurs, of course, everything is possible. We might see a, a Bitcoin price action breaking below the 20 period SMA on the four hour chart and even finding support around the $47,000. That means exactly the level of the 50 period SMA right now. So as to the BitMEX funding rate and looking at the four hour chart, right now we have a slight favoring of the bears because this is extended to the upside. So we are leaving the neutral territory for the BitMEX funding rate already. And you guys know that this is inversely correlated to the market sentiment. Every time there is uh, a lot of leverage on the longs side, this actually happens to favor the bears. So let's see how that evolves. Everything is pointing out to a short term correction. So let's see how that goes. Uh, let me just take a look here very quickly to the pro indicators framework. And right now we are exactly, exactly here. You guys can see we just touched the resistance context and we started to go down. So guys, technical analysis never fails. It might not give you 100% probabilities, but it never fails. So let's see, we hit the resistance context. We went above the level that was expected, but however, the resistance context made resistance really strong around this level, the 50,650, and we started to go down. So let's see how this goes, but the probabilities are that we could see a retracement. The only thing we cannot see, and this is also in the other chart that I will show in the end about the big outlook of Bitcoin, is a breakdown of this red trend line here. But I'm expecting I'm expecting that we could go to 47, 46,000, probably 47,000 for now, not a big retracement, but I'm expecting some kind of retracement now and continuation to the upside later. So let's see how that goes. Right now, dollar is coming down. So finally, the dollar is coming down. You guys see here, the plotted orange dashed line that I've put here long time ago, several, several weeks ago, was big resistance to the dollar. And that is absolutely amazing. I, I plotted this line when we were when, like when we were around here, this big move up of the dollar, probably. I remember that this was about the time I put this orange dashed line here. And look at that. It's amazing how technical analysis works. This was the last swing high line and the dollar was rejected and is now going down. So that's very, very good. I love technical analysis because of this, because it gives you a very good insight. It never gives you 100% certainty about anything, but it gives you a very, very good insight of what might um, happen. So in this case, the dollar is coming down. I love that fact. I love the dollar coming down. I want the dollar to go to previous support levels around 90 or 89 on the Dixie. And guys, as I promised, if the dollar breaks this support to the downside, I will have a drink of a very, very strong uh, drink. Anyone, any, any, any drink you guys want to choose or you want to comment uh, on the comments below this video, I will have a big shot of that drink on the video. So let's wait for that day. I will be very, very happy when the dollar finally breaks below the 89 on the Dixie. That will be a great day for Bitcoin, a great day for me, and a great day for everyone that believes in freedom maximalism. So let's see gold here. Gold is continuing up finally. So we left the previous week exactly on the same spot where we started it. And now the new week opened and we are going high. So. The next step is to break this uptrend uh, trend line here to the upside. And that's very important for gold. You guys know already, despite me being a 
Bitcoin maximalist, I also like that the, that gold is bullish because that means the dollar is weak. So every time gold goes up, I believe this is because of the hyperinflation protection that people want to um, get away from. And that means that the dollar is, of course, losing value while gold is getting value. So uh, in this case, it's good that gold could cross above the trend line here. That's a good sign for Bitcoin too. That's a bad sign for the dollar. So overall, it's very good for me and for you all. The SMP continues to be very, very stubborn. Look at this, guys. This is amazing here. I love the fact that we had four MRI tops, four MRI tops already, three extensions, and the SMP continues to go up. So this is amazing how the printing of dollars can synthetically increase a market. That's amazing. Uh, I, uh, I find this very, very, uh, as a very good example of how you can manipulate a market just by printing dollars. I don't believe this is an organic uh, move to the upside anymore. I believe that the SMP is overextended to the upside. And one of the main reasons for that is, of course, the printing of the dollar and the trillions that they are putting outside of the Fed. So right now I have my really big doubts. I have big doubts that this can continue. Look at the RSI, guys. This is amazing. We have been overbought for so many weeks already, except for this uh, small period around here when it crashed a bit. But we have been on overbought territory for so long already on the SMP. I can't believe this continues to go up. I'm expecting, and as long as this continues to go up at this pace, I will see a big and bigger and bigger correction. So the longer it takes to correct, the bigger the correction will be. And this is very, very dangerous. If you guys have your positions in the S&P 500, uh, beware of this, guys. This is not organic move. This is already synthetic printing of the dollar, in, uh, um, pushing this market up. And I don't believe this will last for long. So beware there, guys. Just Continue to focus on this and beware of the moves on the S&P. So finally, let's see how our bulls and bears trend is going. So as you guys know, the final chart, the final chart, sorry, is the, the one that shows the white trend line that supports the bulls and we are now fighting for that position and the line of life. This is the line of life here, this red trend line going down. This is the one that cannot be broken to the downside. And of course, the more we go on without breaking this to the downside, the better it is. Because even if we retrace from here and we come back down to find support on the green area that goes from 38,000 to 42,000, the, the, the more difficult it will be for the price action to break this red line to the downside because it will find support on the green area. So right now, the more weeks we go through, the more days we go through, the better to avoid coming down and breaking this red line, which is the line of life in crypto world. So uh, just to finalize this analysis for today, I would like to say that this trend line is holding the price very, very tightly. Uh, the bulls are still in control as long as we are above this white trend line. We are still trying to, to break through this big resistance we have here. I've been saying this for a long time already, the 48 to 51,000 resistance will be the hardest one to break before we go for new all-time highs. So as long as we don't retrace too much, and probably the lowest of the lowest that we could go for retracement is 42,000 or something around that area, I believe that for the second or third or fourth attempt to break this 48,000 resistance, we will be successful and Bitcoin will again see new all-time highs. And of course, one of the main reasons for me to think like that is because now I'm almost completely sure that this is not a dead cat bounce. This could probably be the start of the second part of the, sec of the bull cycle. And even though having slight retracements to the downside and probably even finding support on the $42,000 line, we could continue to the upside to find new all-time highs. So that is what I wanted to leave you guys uh, with today. The, I think this is really important that we achieved. So let me just stop screen share here. Uh, so to summarize what we've been saying here uh, today, I just wanted to leave you guys with this idea. The three items that we finally achieved, that were the three items I really wanted to see happening 
to be almost completely sure that this is not a dead cat bounce. They are there already. So the candle number five closed above 46,500. Uh, the second point was we could never break the 20 week SMA to the downside. That also happened because we already closed candle number five on the count, which was last week, also on the green. And that was the third point that I wanted to see. So right now I have all three points met. Everything is okay in my book to be able to say I'm almost completely sure this is not a dead cat bounce. This is not the one to four candle correction in the middle of a bear market. And we might be very well starting the second part of this bull cycle. So that is the main message today. The second message I want to leave to you guys is, of course, that we might be seeing a small retracement in the next few days. Don't expect to break the 48,000 to 51,000 resistance level at first attempt, at the first attempt. This will be a very, very hard resistance to break. But as soon as we break it, I'm expecting new all-time highs. So let's see how that goes. And now, of course, the wise words, as usual, every recorded video. All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Let's be careful out there, guys, in the markets. And I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.